Now it's time to put uh, our eyelets on. And eyelets is another place that you can make adjustments uh, depending on um, what you're trying to accomplish you could screw this on a little further or, or not quite as much you could probably get within a, a millimeter or two millimeters of variance there now the reason you want to use pliers like this is because you don't want to scratch the shock shafts no matter what because then you will leak fluid you'll have inconsistent shocks probably should uh, put a teeny bit of grease in there It'll help get it on Just a dab. Regardless, you want these to be equal, left to right. So, now you can put on a spring. Now, uh, the color, I usually put the color up high uh, it's easier for me to see it there, and if it's down on the bottom, it has a better chance of getting damaged and the paint chipped away, like from an impact from another car. So, it does let other people see what color you're, you know, spring you're running, but they don't know which kit it's from, and, I mean, really, who cares? Um, I have no problem sharing information with people. I'd rather help other drivers and, and win on skill, not just because I have a better setup. I mean, it's if I was racing, you know, for for gain, if I was a pro, um, if I was trying to win a championship, yeah, I'd be all kinds of secretive, but I'm not. So I'm happy to pass on information and teach teach the newbies. And you got to think about it. I mean, this is an expensive sport. There's not a lot of people get into it. It's kind of a niche thing. It tends to be a really nice community of people, and we want it to keep going. So the more people that try it and have a good time and come back, instead of just buying a car, going to the track once or twice, not doing well at all, not even feeling welcome, and then never coming back again, never buying a second car, never going to the races. Um, you know, that's not good for the community. So that's one of the reasons I try to be helpful.
Let me see if they give us any uh, basics on preload. No, no preload settings. Okay. Let me see if there's anything on the sheets that I've been working off of. There. Okay, preload is basically your measurement from the uh, collar here to the uh, adjuster. Um, so basically, I'm just right now setting this to the spring here. Now this is a, a value that people might be curious about because even if you know the spring, knowing how much preload a person is using can be just as important as the spring. I'm just going to eyeball these up a little bit. The front one, I, the spring was shorter than the amount of space total, so I went ahead and uh, just adjusted it till it got to tension. Okay. I think that will do for the moment. Okie dokie. Okay, first we need to push these in. Now, that's one of the nice things about this tool is that you can just uh, put that ball on there and just gently squeeze it until it pops in place. Now, you can push it through if you push too hard, so don't do that. See, those are all the same size. Uh, I'm gonna swap those for titanium. Just because I can. Oh, wait a minute. I put the, one of the fronts on the rear.
I'm going to go ahead and use the power driver. See now, I don't have that issue with the uh, the dog bone um, because the shock has limited how far down that arm can travel, so the dog bone isn't going to pop out on me. That's nice, and it's extra nice because it means I get to keep my slick gear diff, which I really wanted. Doki, that's nice. Let's see how this looks with some tires on it. It does come with a set of wheels, just FYI, but you're going to want more. Now, these aren't, don't come like that. I just stuck them on to bag stuff up, keep it organized, save space, that kind of thing. And we need this for our battery. Let's see, is this where they put our wheel nuts? Yes. I've got... Uh, Right now I've got three sets of tires, uh, all with slightly different characteristics. For example, um, this set is a nice set of J Concepts. I use the same ones on my SCT, among others. Keep your bags, don't tear them past the Ziploc. The number one thing that degrades tires, other than driving them on pavement, is letting them uh, get air, letting them uh, be exposed to you know air for long periods of time. Not that there isn't air in the bag, but it's the same air. Uh, you leave them out in circulating air and it will degrade the tires over time. 
Now, as I mentioned, these are not glued on, but I'll go ahead and show you the other tires I'm going to be running right off the bat. Okay, uh, the J Concepts. Um, these are the uh, the octagons. It's got a very light tread pattern. Um, I've got a set of pro lines. Uh, I'm just going to show you one of them. Um, they're called the Bald Eagle, and they are a straight up slick. Uh, this is going to be for um, basically hard clay, high grip surfaces. Or carpet. And the next set, I might use them on clay or at least experiment with them, but mainly these are for outdoors uh, where you've got a more dusty, loose surface dirt as opposed to hard packed blue groove clay. These are the rears. And it's called the uh, the pin downs. It's a very small pin, and this is it's the tire almost feels like plastic, not rubber. It's a lot stiffer. It's got a nice stiff sidewall, and uh, the the surface. I mean, when you like pull on this with your hand, like play with it like that, look at what it does to your fingers. I mean, these are some stiff pins. They're gonna dig. And for the front, this is a actually specifically a front tire they're called swaggers and again a very stiff sidewall it's actually got some gusseting in the sidewall which makes the sidewall extra extra stiff um, and you've got this nice linear pattern that again like these is very stiff you know it see um, so these are gonna corner really well these are going to really steer the car in loose dirt conditions especially if there's any moisture they'll really bite so these are the tires i'm going to be running this year uh or at least initially um most likely the octagons are going to be my first best choice for where I'm going to run, which is uh, indoor clay track. I can't wait to see how these look. <laughs> Yeah, babe. Yeah. Oh, I just got the announcement that dinner is ready. Prepare to be jealous. My wife has been uh, cooked a big beef roast in a slow cooker with noodles. She has made this before more than a few times. It is a meal fit for kings which means i'm gonna be spoiled rotten you gotta love it actually i do a lot of the cooking especially when she was before working before she retired when i was home i did a lot of the cooking we're both dangerous in the kitchen when we do it together hell yeah we can cook holiday dinners like you wouldn't believe. But I love it when she cooks for me. It just makes me feel spoiled. And just like me, she likes showing off in the kitchen. Okay. How 
How about that? Bad. Can't wait to get um, you know the motor and, and battery in here and, and see how it how much it droops. Well, I'm gonna go eat and uh, I'll be back.